I have played World of Warcraft since release day, and up until two years ago when my first daughter was born, still did. I met my husband because of that game, and had two babies. That game saved me from the cruel reality that I was forced to endure at the hands of my father. I was safe in this virtual world, away from his sick perversions and harsh words and actions. I thought. I loved to raid a lot, I mean, religiously, and as a 16-year-old girl playing a game dominated by men, I got a lot of attention, 90% of it being negative. This is one of those, although I didn't think so at first. My guild and I were raiding, and our main tank was sick, so we were low a body for Nax. We found our new tank from a sister guild and began our raid night. I was a healer and was assigned to said new tank. He was super nice and very talkative. We talked a lot that night, even long after the raid had ended. We even went so far as to exchange MySpace info and email. His name, in game, was Razor, so that's what I always called him. My name in game was Chastity, so that's what he always called me. We didn't use real names, and now I am so very glad. We talked forever, and I was thrilled to discover he lived not 25 minutes away. Now seeing as I was a 16-year-old girl, I posted way too much information on my MySpace. Way too much keep that in mind. Razor and I talked for weeks and weeks and he was so nice and even helped me through a tough breakup. We talked on the phone until the wee morning hours and he listened to me cry and offered kind advice to a very lonely, very stupid teenage girl. Keep in mind he said he was 27 at the time. Looking back at this, I now realize how creepy it was becoming a lot earlier than I noticed it back then. He started flirting, and I must admit I flirted with him a bit too. Then he got sexual, and as a 16 year old I lived for attention. Then his sexual emails got slightly violent. One instant in particular I remember was an email he sent where he told me in graphic detail how he would like to rape me so hard that his man parts would rip through my cervix so he could feel the inside of my womb. Stupidly. Even after reading that, I still talk to him. One day after walking my dog through the park, I returned home to the phone ringing off the hook. No one was home, which was normal as my parents both worked a lot, so I answered it. It was him. The first thing he said was, I saw you today. You're so cute. He then proceeded to describe my dog, everything I was wearing, and even my makeup. I said rather shakily, Oh, why didn't you say hi? I didn't see you. He said, I, I didn't want to scare you. You'd know me if you saw me. I have a lot of scars, mostly on my neck. Even back then, in all my stupidity, I was starting to get scared. I said, Yeah? From what? His reply was way too happy when he said, From glass. I only remember next was hearing him say, can I come in? I slammed the phone down and grabbed two of the biggest knives in the kitchen. I grabbed my dog, 200 pounds St. Bernard, and hauled her into my room. As I was barricading my door, I heard someone pounding on the front door. The pounding continued for what seemed like hours. Until it got dark, I jumped at every single noise I heard until my mom got home. I never answered any more of his phone calls or emails after that though he sent tons and emailed me several hundred times a day. I am so glad I didn't open that door. It all started out in the early years of the MMORPG RuneScape. Now if you don't know what RuneScape is, I suggest you search it up now. It was once the most popular MMO to hit the interwebs until WoW took over. Now before 2005, my family had used the old dial-up method of internet use and weren't expecting to change anytime soon. This annoyed me a lot, being an 11 year old kid and having beyond turtle slow internet was killing me. I would need to wait 1 or 2 hours for a 5 minute YouTube clip to buffer and I could download a 1 gigabyte movie in about 4 days. Yep, life sucked for me. Fortunately. I lived very close to a big shopping complex and in the shopping complex was a gaming cafe. The first time I saw the gaming cafe my brain immediately told me to visit there sometime in the future and that's what I did. 
It was a school break and my parents were still working during weekdays so I'd ask my older sister for a bit of spare cash and head down to the cafe, which was probably only a 10 minute walk from my front door. I remember my jaw dropping as I stepped into the cafe. It was dark, had cool blue neons lighting up the corners of the big room and rows and rows of widescreen computers set neatly. I initially stayed only for 30 minutes each couple of days, browsing YouTube clips and playing the simplest of flash games until I found a game called RuneScape, which a couple of guys were playing in the corner. I quickly learned about the game and finally decided to try it myself. Oh, what bliss. The internet was fast, the screen was wide and the room was dark. What more could an obnoxious 11-year-old kid want? I was fascinated about the lore and mechanics of the game. How could I have not heard it before? How amazing was it to be a virtual man in a virtual world, I thought. I realized that time was coming by faster and faster and I was asking for more and more spare change from my sister. It's funny how she never found it odd. One particular day I was at the cafe and I walked over to my usual spot, far corner, I thought I had the fastest computer, and there's this obese guy sitting next to my favorite spot, at least he didn't take my computer I thought. But then I realized that he was playing RuneScape and was actually quite pro at it. I sit next to him and I boot up the computer and go straight to RuneScape like usual. I'm determined to show off my character and my wealth in this game and he seems to notice. I admit, I was decent at that time, average player, and this seemed to piss him off. This obese guy in his 20s seems to be pissed off that I have such a noob account on RuneScape and is determined to show off his account, which I admit at the time was admirable. Every time I looked at his screen, he muttered under his breath things like, Mind your own, and do you mind? I didn't seem to be concerned at his weird behavior, but I guess I was 11 years old at that time, so I'm excused. As time goes on, as in weeks and months, I was probably at the same level as this guy. This set him off pretty hard. He would always ask the guy at the counter if I could be banned from coming to this cafe. Obviously, the guy asked for a reason and this fatso didn't come up with anything viable. So I'm pretty upset so I try and move and just as I'm standing up, the guy screams something like, This fucking kid is trying to steal my skittles. What an asshole, I thought. The guy at the desk comes to the scuffle and he tells me to move somewhere else. I agree and this obese guy is still giving me dirty looks. Skip ahead, two weeks later. I'm back again and the fat guy is sitting in his usual spot. I try to avoid eye contact but I can feel his eyes glazed on me everywhere I go. So I sit in my new favorite spot and I log into RuneScape. Well this was the age in RuneScape where you could go add anyone onto your friends list without the other player's consent. I knew this because the mean fat guy from across the room is sending me IMs in RuneScape telling me to change servers. I always played in the same servers since my friends all did too. It was like an unofficial school friends server, and I don't reply because I don't have his name on my friends list. This goes on for ages, and I never stopped to think of how awkward it was for him to be cussing me out in a game from across the room. I would have reported him if he used bad language, but he never did, and I think he knew his limits, at least in the pixel world. Suddenly one day out of nowhere, this fat idiot asked me to go into the wilderness, kind of like a PvP part of the world, to help him kill something in game. I'm not a dumbass, at least not in RuneScape. Now for you guys and gals who don't know about PvP in RuneScape, if you die to someone else, you lose all your stuff in your bag. So basically, this idiot thinks he can trick me into going to the wilderness with him, then lure me far enough to kill me and claim his title and pride. Well, all I can remember was that our in-game level differences were very little, and I spent my time in-game doing quests and grinding while the fat man sat in-game doing irrelevant things, which explains why I had caught up within a few months of starting. Back to the cafe, I agree and I can feel the tension between us. This idiot also tells me to wear my best armor and weapons in case we die to zombies, he says. Prior to this, I tell one of my friends Chris to follow us at a distance so I can get my revenge by jumping the fatso with the help of Chris and ultimately get his stuff. The fat guy notices that a random guy, my friend, is following us and potentially ruining his scheme. He tells Chris to get lost in game and tries to make me change servers so we can shake my friend off. Then I make up a brilliant plan. 
I'll tell the fat idiot to lure my friend Chris deep into the wildy so we can jump him instead. That's the complete opposite of what I had intended. Just to tell you folks, we are all private IMing in game so neither can see what we type to other people. On with the plan. The fat guy agrees, but Chris and I know he'll end up killing me afterwards anyways. By the way, the fatso doesn't know I have a connection with Chris so the idiot thinks that Chris is just a tag along random. We finally reach the wilderness. I remember we were kind of lost. I tell Chris to ask the mean guy if they want to jump me instead. Chris asks. Immediately, the fat guy agrees and I can hear him laughing in the cafe. The idiot strikes me first, which means he will lose all items since he is the one starting the duel. I snicker and I tell Chris to jump him. We end up killing the guy and I'm picking up his stuff when I notice the fat idiot out of the corner of my eye getting out of his seat to come and presumably eat me. I quickly log off, run under the tables and out of the cafe, prepaid cafe by the way, and I sprinted for my life. Skip ahead to one year later, our house finally has broadband hooked up and my sister bought a nice laptop which she shared with me. I had not touched RuneScape for exactly one year and I logged on to see what it was like. I had lost interest in RuneScape and I'm just trying out some new features when I get a private I am from Fatty in the cafe. You're lucky you didn't come back. I remember him saying this vividly. I didn't reply and I tried to ignore him. I wish I could kill you in real life was the next thing he said. After, I didn't reply. I immediately filed a report on him and he was banned a week later. Information came through my email. I can't imagine what would have happened if I went back to that cafe. So my old best friend Kim and I began talking about various MMOs that we had played throughout the years. I ended up telling her that my favorite and most memorable one was Ultima Online, UO, which I began playing when I was about 8 years old. She proceeded to tell me that her favorite MMO favored UO as well, until something extremely disturbing had happened. So Kim's mom had met this woman online, and they began to get close. Her mom never divulged any personal details to the whereabouts of where she lived, other than her country. This story takes place in the late 90s, incredibly early 2000s, so being guarded with your information online was at its peak. As Kim told me, she was probably 8 or 9 at the time, and she would arrive home from school about 2 hours before her mother got home from work. On this particular day, Kim walked into her house and had to do a double take in the living room as there was a lady sitting on her couch. Needless to say, Kim freaked out and ran out of the house to her neighbor's house and called her mom. Her mom came home immediately and confirmed that this woman was in fact the one she had been talking to on Ultima Online. Now, how this lady got their address was beyond them, as I said earlier that Kim's mom never gave their address to this person. They also have no idea how the woman got inside their house either. It's impossible that somehow she tracked their IP address, but that technology was rare in those days. And just showing up at someone's house and having the means to enter, to say that is invasive, is a gross understatement. I am a 28 year old male living in the deep south. I am now a functional medicated and therapy attending paranoid schizophrenic. However, I wasn't always this way and this story comes from a time before I ever even knew what was wrong. It was about April 2007 when this happened. I had just come out of a painful divorce. She had taken all of my friends away from me in the process. I was, obviously, trying to reach out to anyone I could, but I had severe codependency issues that I didn't know how to address. I found myself wandering the game section of my local Walmart, as I am still a gamer at heart, and had to see what was available. Things were going alright, and I seemed to be in control of myself. Then he appeared. This poor, unsuspecting soul started talking to me about World of Warcraft, which I happened to play. I perked up at this point, thinking I could make a friend, a new friend that hadn't been taken from me. We made casual jokes and talked about the new expansion. I can't remember if it had just come out or if it was soon to come. At this point, his mother, he was probably about 18 to 20 judging by his appearance, 
came by and took him to another aisle. He didn't say goodbye, he just walked off, and like that, our conversation was through. Well, in my mind, we had made a connection, we had bonded. In my sick, twisted state, I thought he would appreciate if we hung out for a while, so I followed him. I made a point to casually stroll down the aisles that he happened to visit and strike up conversations with him about different things, jokes, I can't remember. I could tell he was getting creeped out by the third time I had done this. He started getting this deer-in-the-headlights look every time he saw me, and it was starting to become a horror story, though in my eyes, it was perfectly natural. At some point, however, his fight-or-flight must have kicked in, because when I appeared, as soon as I opened my mouth to speak, he screamed, Leave me alone! and stormed off, dragging his mother as quickly as he possibly could. This was a wake-up call for me that I was being severely creepy and also a stalker. I realized that this could very well be the behavior that caused my divorce in the first place. I checked myself into a mental institution soon after and got the help I needed. I am now significantly better and my relationships with people have improved greatly. I now have good friends and a loving fiancé. Not all creepers mean to be creepy. Some of us just need the proper psychiatric help. On behalf of all the unknowing and good-intended creepers out there, I humbly and sincerely apologize for our behavior. It doesn't make it right, but I hope it does give some context as to what goes on in the mind of a creeper. When I was about 10 years old, I started playing an online MMORPG known as RuneScape. I started playing during late 2006 and it was common for people to have an online boyfriend or girlfriend. As an incredibly immature 10 year old girl, I got a boyfriend. He said he was also 10 years old and I of course believed him. He told me that he also lived in Australia, although in another state to me, and that he went to school. I added him on MSN and he would introduce me to his friends and family. His sister would come on and talk to me almost every day, telling me that he told her and his friends about how much he loved me and that they always used to talk about me at school. This went on for two years. It was then 2008 and I was 12 years old. All of a sudden, he changed. He had added most of my friends from school on MSN and began talking to them, asking them if they had fingered themselves, telling them all the nasty things he would do to them and that he would come and find them and eventually kill them. I can't remember every little thing he said anymore as it was over eight years ago. But somehow, I had found out what his MySpace was, and I saw that he was actually 17 years old. This means that he had dated, I use that term loosely as it was not really dating, a 10-year-old girl online for two years, only to befriend her and then tell her that he would find her, rape her, and kill her. Being a little bit older, I started putting everything together. I realized that there was no sister and no friends, and they were all him. All characters that he had made to put together a story of a ten-year-old boy, and I fell for it. He also had a friend in-game that I played a lot with. They claimed to be a couple in their mid-thirties, and were a fireman and a doctor, and yet they were in-game almost 24-7. It didn't make sense. Upon finding out who I had actually been talking to, I immediately told my mum, and together with my dad we printed out the MSN chat logs and took them straight to the police. The police didn't know what they were reading and couldn't do anything about it. I just blocked him on MSN and RuneScape and made sure that my friends did the same. I took a small break from RuneScape after that, but I came back in 2009. In 2010, I decided to unblock him and check to see if he was online. I went under the name of Pure Hibiscus, and there he was, online. Of course, I didn't know if it was actually him, as he may have sold his account, but being older I thought that I could yell at him, ask him how he could do that to a 10-year-old girl for two years, but I chickened out. I kept him added for ages and eventually reblocked him. Sometimes I regret not talking to him. Several years ago I played an MMO pretty addictively and one day joined a modest guild. Everyone there was nice and the majority of the members were about my age. 
I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I think most people were 17 to 22, and I was probably 18 for the encounter contained. Anyway, everyone's really nice, and there was no real drama throughout its duration, and I played enough, and people liked me enough to elect me as a guild officer. A little about me first. I think I played this game for about three years before finally quitting, and if I remember correctly, I was either 16 or 17 when I first started. I'm a 21-year-old Asian woman, and unfortunately the Asian part is relevant for this post and my whole time in this game. Several details will be withheld or minorly changed, such as names, to avoid doxing. Now in this MMO, the community is divided into about five servers that cannot interact with each other. The game is essentially the same in each, but the opening dates of the servers were different for whatever reason. On the start of the one to three months that led me to quitting, a particular person joins our guild. He apparently created a new character so he could join the server I'm in, which is apparently the Chill People server, from his server that was apparently overran with exploiters, abused bugs, hackers, etc. On the server he's from, he was a somewhat well-known and very high-leveled character, and judging by his game knowledge and control, he probably wasn't lying. So this guy joined the guild while I was an officer, and since he was new to the server and guild, I got to know him a little. Since he wanted to start fitting in, the guild leader encourages him to talk to me, so he will eventually fit in, so I get to know him a bit. He tells me he's a software engineer and game developer from Vancouver named Victor, and that he personally knows Bill Gates, apparently. For some reason, I forget his age, but I think he's in his early to mid-twenties. He tells me about his work, how he's a very successful software engineer, and a lot more bragging when I search for his name, which he tells me. I can't find him anywhere, of course, and he says that he works behind the scenes, which is apparently why he's not known. Bill Gates and other similar giants pay him royalties for his games and programs. Okay, I thought. Obviously, I know he's lying, but I don't really care much since, honestly, I think it's kind of funny. I tell him a little about myself, age, and some interests to be friendly. It wasn't enough to find out my identity, but I tell him enough to know about me. I believe I was a high school student during this time. He eventually finds out that I'm Asian, and that's when it all begins. When he found out, he pesters me about what kind of Asian I am, and how he loves Chinese food, how he loves small, thin, and shy Asian women, something to that effect, and how pretty, blah blah, etc, etc, typical and gross, and he continues bragging and lying. After a while, I ignore his messages, and he gets the hint. I think he also had a fetish for height differences. Apparently Victor was 6'4", and I'm 5'3", so at this point and after, his usual bothering talked about some fantasies pertaining to that. He also mentioned how he loved how small and thin Asian women are. It also didn't help matters that his character was much taller than mine. Eventually, he becomes pretty popular in the guild and people believe his nonsense about his career, and then his messages get a little bolder. He starts telling me that I'm very beautiful and sending me very expensive game items. This is stuff that I'd never imagine of having price-wise and it's also stuff that didn't suit my style anyway. My extremely powerful character couldn't afford such items but his extremely low-level account had a bunch of this stuff somehow. For everything he sent to me I just returned it using the game's mail return function or if he tried giving it to me through a personal trade I'd just decline. Honestly, he was very insistent to make me his with his nonsense bragging and expensive dresses. I told absolutely nobody about this as it was happening, since I thought he was just a lonely man who was attracted to me probably because I'm Asian and dress very well in game. Being the unproductive person I still am, I was on nearly every day, and so was he, but out of nowhere, he doesn't sign on for about three days, so I'm happy to have a break from him. Overall, this guy was very sociable in the guild's public chat and with other people from what I saw. He was somewhat prideful and manly, and the way he dressed, colored his equipment, where he AFK'd, non-guildies he hung out with, his arrogance and excessive pride, and his general demeanor were pretty much just like any other extremely high-level pro in this MMO. For me, there was no doubt he was a veteran from a different server. Whenever he talked to me, it really, really felt like he was trying to impress me with his game knowledge and huge wealth, which honestly I find really awkward and a little revolting that they think that such nonsense works at some pickup artist strategy. 
To put it at an extreme, that's like bragging to my mom about how he was the first person to reach level 99 fishing on RuneScape and expect her to swoon. I just find it ridiculous. And he really wasn't the first person to pull this stunt on me. Men have guilt tripped me with gifting me some item before so I wasn't new to this nonsense. He's just the one I couldn't drop cold since he was in my guild and I was in a leadership position. When he finally signs on, he tells me that his best friend was murdered by someone with a sword. I'm no expert on how crimes get reported, but I'm pretty sure a brutal murder would be on the news so I google and find nothing similar. Regardless, I don't dismiss it coldly since it's not impossible for that to happen, so I attempt to console him while keeping the boundary. He then tells me that I'm the only person he has left, as if we were ever some sort of item. So I just don't respond to his messages and he eventually signs off after some dramatic messages. A month passes and he eventually calms down but his desire for my attention stays a little constant. I don't think he ever told the guild about his alleged murdered friend or why he was gone. At the very least, it never happened in our guild chat. At about month two, he starts following my character around and finds me when I AFK with poses like him hugging my character, or if I'm sitting, makes it look like my character is sitting on his lap or anything along those lines. He posts these pictures to the guild website section where we share random in-game photos and writes a description staging it as if we're a couple, and literally every active person in the guild writes comments and sends private messages to me that are congratulating us. Whatever. I tell them that we're not a couple, and they take my word way above his on that so it got a little awkward, but that eventually faded. One month after this event, he posts in the guild forums about this new MMO he's allegedly making which is named after my nickname, derived from my character name, and that he has offers pending from Microsoft, Blizzard, and some other companies, so it's apparently going to happen. I don't know if people were just messing around, but they all sounded as if they really, really, really believed him, except for just one person. The younger guild members, ages 17 to 18, were the only ones who responded as if they believed. Well, whatever. I just didn't respond to the topic, and life went on with his usual constant bothering. His MMO was basically a copy-paste of the MMO we were playing, but with some commonly circle jerk proposed changes. About two weeks later, he suddenly leaves the guild and starts his own new guild and gains a lot of notoriety and the same famous hacks and exploits from his previous server spread around the server I'm on and he basically cuts off all contact with the guild. I ask him why he left in the first place, but he just says that it's all my fault because I'm a heartless bitch and that I could have had it all if I simply became his girlfriend and then he removes me from his friends list. I'm pretty happy that he finally stopped talking to me and now I won't be flooded with messages anymore like that. It ended so suddenly that I really had nothing to think except just K and yay. Looking back, I'm surprised how tame he ended all of this nonsense. Compared to the other MMO creeps I've encountered, brief encounters, he didn't sexually harass nearly as much, but once again I found it impossible to avoid him since he's a member in the guild I had a leadership position in. In the end, I never told anyone else in the guild except for someone I happened to meet randomly when I decided to log on to my account about a year later on a whim. The thing I hated above all about this situation is how powerless I felt against his bothering, even though I was in a leadership position. Maybe it was my twisted mentality at the time, or I got influenced by his bothering, but for whatever reason I felt like I would be judged negatively by the guild if I simply slapped him in place, kicked him, or told anyone else. I still think that if I told anyone in the guild, I'd make people mad that I was being so cold to him, especially considering that everyone believed that he's making a game named after me. I had a friend, a friend who I thought of as a brother, a friend I could talk to and a friend I told my deepest secrets. I met him at my school, or more specifically a sports day. I called him Joshua. It was the last day of school before the holidays. We hung around with a bunch of others, had some laughs, enjoyed ourselves and after we exchanged our Facebook names. Pretty normal stuff. It wasn't until the middle of the holidays until he messaged me. He just said hello and said he wanted to check up on me. Now, I should tell you I'm quite a loner and I've never had a proper friend since primary school. I'm in the fourth year of secondary school, so I was quite flattered by this. 
We started talking consecutively to each other around the same time I was moving house. He told me he only lived about 10 to 15 minutes away from me, so we could really hang out together. I was really excited we would be able to hang out. I had never had a friend over to my house before, so it was a new experience. Fast forward a year later, and we are now best friends. We discovered each other's interests, walked around the town together, went to the movies and went swimming, exchanged secrets. We did anything, really. The problem is, he had gotten really clingy. I knew he wanted to get with me, but at this time I had a boyfriend, Charlie, and he knew this so I was pretty annoyed. He insisted that Charlie couldn't treat me right or that he didn't really love me and that Charlie would talk shit behind my back. When I asked for proof, he wouldn't talk to me for an hour. Honestly, I didn't really care because he was pretty annoying. He constantly tried to call me on Skype, but I was usually talking with Charlie so he would try and get into the call with us. Charlie and I never really got time together because he had a job and I had to study, so we said no to Joshua most of the time. He would get salty and would say, if you were really my friend, you'd let me join, but would apologize 30 minutes later for being childish. All my friends, the internet ones and Joshua at least, know I'm a huge gamer and recently got into an MMO that was new at the time. I didn't tell Joshua that I would be playing it because I didn't want him to trail behind me. He had already done it twice before and kept bugging me to always play with him. I had found a guild with great people I would raid with twice a week for a few hours. They were like a second family to me. A week later, he found out I had been playing this MMO from a friend and signed up to join my guild. I knew it was him because he always used the same name. Not even a week later, he was kicked from the guild. Apparently, he would talk shit behind my back and would harass the female members. Plus, they just thought he was really annoying. He thought anything he said was comedy gold and every second sentence was a shitty reference. He also interrupted the raid by coming into one of our voice channels for raiding and start blaring loud music. He got what he deserved, honestly. After hearing he would talk shit behind my back though and decided that enough was enough, I called him on Skype and told him I didn't want to be friends anymore. He didn't take this lightly. He cussed me out and threatened he'd bleed out my secrets to my friends, saying he'd ruin my life, and I hung up on him and blocked him. I had enough of him, and I thank God he was gone. Or so I thought. I had forgotten he knew where I lived because I had delayed seeing him for a month, and I prioritized my guild over him and I really just didn't want to talk to him. About three weeks later after getting Joshua out of my life, I noticed something that gave me chills. I'm an insomniac and I like to look at the street lamps outside sometimes. I just love the glow of a stray street lamp in the midst of darkness. I had black roller blinds covering my window and you couldn't really tell if someone was looking at you from my window. That's when I saw Joshua standing outside under the street lamp closest my house. Outside my window is a balcony. You could easily climb up and down it because of the many ledges and pipes on the side of my house. It's how I would sneak out sometimes. I should also mention that I always had my window open because it was so warm in my room and I didn't have a fan or air conditioning, but the past week it was freezing so I kept it closed. I was fucking terrified. I could see him staring at my window. I knew what he was going to do and not 15 minutes later, he started climbing up the ledges and pipes. It was just quite enough to hear the pipes banging against the wall. I was so glad I had closed the window because you could easily slip in or out of it. I had turned off my monitor just in case any light seeped through. I didn't want him to know I was there. I was shaking. My teeth were chattering but I tried my best to stay quiet. I didn't move out of my room because the floorboards were creaky and very loud and if you were standing outside on the balcony you could hear pretty much anything. I couldn't scream for help because my mom had left to go out drinking and my little sister was staying at my grandparents. I heard the creak of the balcony. It was only a window separating me and Joshua. It became a waiting game and it felt like minutes became hours. I heard him trying to open the window but there was no real way you could open it unless you were inside. I think it was 5 a.m. now. I heard my mom's car pull into the driveway and I was extremely relieved. She began shouting at Joshua and I could hear him jump back onto the pipes. My mom got inside and rushed up to my room, giving me a big hug and being glad that I was okay. We called the police but they said they couldn't do anything unless he actually assaulted me. It's been a year and a half now and I still hadn't seen or heard about him. 
he had just up and disappeared, but maybe that's for the best. I am a now 20 year old male living in the Netherlands and I have been a geek all my life. Games in particular have always played a major role in my life, starting when I got my first PlayStation when I was 5 years old. Something about gaming just always got me, be it mechanically or in terms of storytelling, I could always find something to love about it. As I grew older I got more and more into RPGs and eventually found my way onto World of Warcraft. As I got more involved in the game I started joining raiding guilds. For those of you who don't know, it's basically a group of players who intent on facing the game's hardest content as a team. The second guild I joined was the greatest bloody team of people I had met thus far. One of these people was a Swedish girl who was around my age called Maggie. We got along quite nicely as it turned out her mom, who was also in this guild, was actually living in the Netherlands. So often we'd end up in conversations where she would ask me to teach her some Dutch and she'd teach me some Swedish in return. It was all good fun. Fast forward to the beginning of 2013. The aforementioned guild had fallen apart a while back and I had joined a new one. I had stayed in touch with some people in the old guild but Maggie really hadn't been online all that much. When she did get back online we quickly caught up. It turned out that she actually moved in with her mother and had spent the last couple of months improving her Dutch and attending a high school. She also started dating this guy called William who was actually part of the same guild I had met Maggie in. He always struck me as a nice guy. Other guild members always thought he was a bit direct and perhaps rude, but being Dutch I understood that's just simply how our culture works so I was always okay with it. June comes around, me and Maggie recently finished our final exams and were waiting for the results to come back in. One afternoon while we were playing online I suggested a meet up between the two of us. I really didn't have much to do and given that she had voiced her concerns about finding her footing in Dutch social circles, I figured this was a nice opportunity to take her first baby steps into the country. She excitedly agreed and asked if she could bring William as well. Obviously I said yes, seeing as he was her boyfriend. Meetups are safer when you arrive as a couple, and meeting former guild members was something I was looking forward to anyway. A couple of days later I met both of them in Rotterdam and had a great day. I showed them around the city since I knew it best, had some nice conversations and a few laughs and we ended the day by taking a trip to the Euromast. Before leaving, Maggie had to go to the bathroom so me and William were waiting outside. Striking up conversation I said to him, You two make a nice couple. Hey thanks, he replied. I freaking love her you know. Honestly wouldn't know what I would do without her at this stage. Back then I didn't think much of that statement. It's just a thing people say when they are in love. So kudos to him, right? Maggie got out of the restroom, we said our goodbyes and we parted ways. A few weeks later we got our exam scores back. I had passed high school with flying colors, but Maggie wasn't so lucky. She had failed most of her exams. She told me she was going to be studying for the rest of summer in order to properly prepare for her rerun of the last year of high school. I told her that if she needed any help that I was willing to see what I could do, even when I was going to college. She was very thankful and assured me that she'd let me know if she needed any help. Fast forward again to September. After our last conversation, Maggie had practically disappeared off the internet. She hadn't logged into World of Warcraft, she was never on Skype, and wasn't even online on Facebook anymore. I had asked William in mid-August how she was doing and he assured me she was fine, so I thought nothing of it. I even admired her focus on her education. However, during my second week in college, all of that changed. I got into the metro and picked up a free newspaper in the seat next to me to pass the time. I vividly remember turning to the fourth page to read a headline saying, Swedish woman 19 from city stabbed in own backyard. It took me a few seconds to even realize that she lived in that city now and that she was 19. Even though the article didn't mention a name, I grew very concerned. I quickly sent her a text message as we exchanged phone numbers when we met up, asking her if she was okay. The rest of the day went by and I heard nothing from Maggie. I eventually figured that if anything had happened to her, people would have most likely started posting things on her Facebook page. Concerned and scared of what I was going to find, I started typing her name into the search bar of Facebook. Sure enough, it was already filling up with messages from people who had heard she passed away from her injuries. 
After inquiring with some other former guild members, it turned out William had stabbed her. She had broken up with him after she got her horrendous test results back, and he wasn't all too pleased with that. In the aftermath of the incident, me and some other Dutch guild members went to her city to meet up with her friends from school, attend the memorial set up in her high school, and to put some flowers at the scene of the crime on behalf of everyone she had played the game with. When she met up with Maggie's school friends, we found out William hadn't been half as nice as we thought he was. During the relationship, he had been very controlling of Maggie, and after the breakup he began stalking her and sending her threatening text messages. She even went to the police to report it, but they told her that they couldn't do anything for her at that stage. After that, she met a different guy and started dating him. William found out and, well, took matters into his own hands. Thinking back at this, the worst part of all this just came to mind. When we put flowers at the scene of the crime, we stood around for a few minutes, contemplating whether or not we should knock on the door and personally give her mother our condolences, given that we kind of knew her as well. We decided against it, given that we might unintentionally remind her mother that Maggie's online connections ultimately cost her her life. As soon as we got back to our car, we saw Maggie's front door open. Out of the door came her mother with Maggie's younger sister. I knew at the time that Maggie had a younger sister, but I didn't know that she was only six or seven. I freaking lost it when I saw her little head hanging down while grabbing hold of her mother, scared to go around the corner to face all the drawings and flowers people had left there. In writing this, I found a very recent article that said William is most likely going to go to prison for 20 years. But honestly, William, I fucking hope you never make it out of there. <laughs>